Now, before we start, and I tell you what I'm gonna talk about this morning, we're gonna pretend we're in Hillsong Kids, is that okay? So if we were in Hillsong Kids, I would say, point to the person next to you and say, you are amazing. And then I would say, point to the person on the other side and say, you are amazing. And then obviously point to yourself and say, I am amazing. And then you would all point at me and say, you are amazing. Thank you so much, I needed that encouragement. Take a seat. (laughs) How are you guys? Good to see you. They're gonna be helping me out a little bit this morning, but um, the thought that I'm bringing this morning is really simple. And it is imagine what God can do through us. Imagine what God could do through me. What God could do through you, through our online community. Imagine what God could do through these legends right here so much through our mums, our dads, our grandmas, our grandpas, our heroes of the faith, every single person in this room. Imagine what God can do through you. And for those online, imagine what God can do through you. I'm sure that this room is full of story after story of how somewhere along the line we've imagined how could God use me? There's thoughts in this room, dreams in this room, ideas in this room, things that you've pursued. I'm hoping I can take you on a journey this morning through my life story on how I imagine what God could do through me. Um, My name's Becky. As I said, I'm a Hillsong Kids pastor. I've been doing Hillsong Kids for 22 years. I definitely deserve a medal. And I've been a Hillsong Kids pastor for 20 years and I honestly could not imagine doing anything else. It is my grace zone. It's what I was put on the earth for. Never in a million years would I have imagined I'd be a kids pastor. But this is what God imagined. I am what God imagined. And you are what God imagined. And He is gonna do such amazing things through you. And I can't believe I get to serve the generations in the house. And um, you know, the Hills Campus is really important to me. I came here in 2001 with my husband as a bright-eyed, bushy-tailed college student. Um, And I just, this was the place, this Hills Campus, this was the place that showed me that anything was possible to lean into God. This was the campus that caused me to start coming alive on the inside out, that caused me to start dreaming that caused me to believe that maybe I could imagine that God could do something through me. So when it comes to my life story, and when I think of when I was younger, when I was younger, I grew up in a home that sadly was chaotic, was dramatic. There was things happening that children shouldn't have to experience, but that was my childhood. But somehow, Like it baffles me when I look back and I see this goodness thread of God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus at work in my life. Somehow, even though I was growing up in this home that wasn't redeemed, somehow I kept finding myself in the house of God. People were just always picking me and my sister up and taking us to church. And then friends would invite me to church. And then when I was eight and my sister was seven, we'd walk in the dark every Thursday night to a local kids club and they would teach us about Jesus. And then I think of, it just blows my mind. And um, you know, I would go to my grandma's house every school holidays who loved Jesus so much. So every school holidays, I couldn't wait to learn something more about Jesus. And that my grandma would tell me and play worship and teach me from the Bible and tell me Bible stories. And I'm so grateful for my grandma who loved Jesus and taught me how to love Jesus. As I grew in the things of God as a young girl, I think I imagined more, how would God use my friends? How was God gonna use all the people around me and not use me? (laughs) Because God knew what was happening in my home. God knew the things that had happened to me. How could He possibly see Becky fine at the time? (laughs) How could He possibly see me and wanna use me? I knew He wanted to be my friend, but was that as far as it went? Could I really imagine that God could use me? And to be honest, it was amazing Jesus following people along the way that imagined for me and believed in me and drew out the gold in me that I couldn't see. I think of someone like Mary, who at 12 years old took me under her wing, would pick me up from church every week, would take me to youth group, would speak life over me, taught me the things of God, taught me how to read the Bible, taught me how to pray, how to worship. And my favourite thing that Mary taught me, 
She just had this knack to love everybody, no matter who they were, to make them feel welcome and to make them feel a part of the family. And that's something that I'm so glad I learned from her. I love this verse from the Bible. I'm so, so grateful for the Word of God, right? Thank you, Jesus. Are we so grateful that we have the Bible? Yes, we are. With promise after promise after promise that we can build our lives on, that can help us to imagine. I love this verse here. God has given each of you a gift from His great variety of spiritual gifts. I love that so much. I love that there's a variety, that you can do what I can't do and I can do what you can't do. And that's amazing. And I love how the end of that verse talks about, you know, at the end of the day, what we're bringing to Him, our gifts, is to give glory to Jesus. And you know, as I started to grow, I became a teenager, a young adult, I realised, oh wait, maybe God is going to use me. He's using my friends and some of the people that I know, so maybe he will use me. Maybe he does have a plan for me. And that I can imagine that God can use me despite my story, despite my childhood, despite my journey and the things that I'd been through. And my journey of imagining began. I couldn't conceive it. I couldn't imagine that it would come true. But I thought, I'm going to step out of the boat and I'm going to imagine a little bit. Does that sound like a good idea? It does. And it led me to ask the question, what's in my hand? And when I think about things that happened over my life and what's in my hand, I know that God was calling me to lead. And I know that God was calling me to be create, to create and to be creative. I couldn't necessarily imagine it fully or understand what that looked like. I didn't know how to start. So I just started. And that's a good place to start, isn't it? (laughs) And I remember when I couldn't imagine being a leader, but I started where I could, and I led more as my confidence grew. I started with my connect group, had a go, started leading one person, started leading teams, and now never would I have imagined 22 years later I would be leading Hillsong Kids Australia, where I get to pay forward kids' ministry expertise, where I get to encourage and cheer on our team and work out the best solutions for them to thrive as they lead their children's ministries and serve in our children's ministries. I could never imagine leading, but God had a plan. Started small, I just started where my feet were and then worked my way up as I grew in confidence and the more that I heard from God. What about create? You know, I went to a camp when I was about 11 and a leader prayed over me that I was gonna be creative and sing and create things and I laughed. (laughs) No way, I would never do any of those things, let alone come on a stage and preach to all of you. What, how did that happen? I'm still figuring that out. And I remember that word, right? So here we are, we've got a word. Someone's saying, I'm gonna create, I'm gonna sing. Even though I laughed, it was important. I didn't think I was good enough, let alone had the boldness to even do what that might mean. But God. So I gave it a go. I even had a really close friend to me as I started to give it a go. One of my best friends come to me and say, you're not good at that. You're actually not gifted at singing or worship leading. I actually suggest that you stop. And I'm going, do I listen to God? And that word that I got when I was a kid? Or do I listen to this friend that I admire and look up to so much? And you know, obviously for me, even though they were my close friend and I respected them and what they said, I had a closer God who had told me when I was a young girl at a camp that I was gonna create and that I was gonna do mighty things for him. And then, never would I have imagined, here I am, and my husband and I have the most amazing honour of writing songs for children. I was looking it up on Friday, I think I've written 37 songs, I think Dave's probably written 100, and that doesn't include memory verses that we've written, which is the Word of God, so technically we haven't written them. We've just put the melody and the music to them. But, like, I never would have imagined that God would use me to create Worship for children so that when they're in their bedrooms or walking to school or at church or just going about their day that these songs would be in their heads and when they're sad, they know they can sing that song, I'm really happy you're in my life. Or when they've got questions, when you ask, He cares, when you seek, 
He's there when you... God opens up the door. I love our kids so much. I love it so, so much. And then I never imagined that lead and create could go hand in hand, that I could lead our children's ministry and then create for our children's ministry. Such a win-win for me. And I've got two of my friends here and I wanna ask them, I said to them, I want you to imagine how could God use you? Like, if you were to choose two things that God will put in your hand, what would they be? So my first friend is Harry. Are you good, Harry? So Harry, I want you to tell everyone, what would you, how would you imagine that God would use you? What are the two things that he would use you to do? I imagine God can use me to bring joy and care to others. And you told me it's because you love making people laugh? Yeah. And you really like caring for people. So show everyone your hands and what God has written in your hands. God is calling Car- Harry to bring joy and to care. And then we've got my amazing friend over here, Yolanda. And we had a good little chat about what God's calling you to do. And so what's the first thing? If you could imagine how God was gonna use you, what was the first thing you came up with? The first thing I came up with was create because I know that God wants me to use things, use this talent to create things and also invent things in the world. Amazing. And what's your second thing? My second thing is peace because I know that God wants me to bring people together. So beautiful. Why don't you show everyone your hands? So how powerful is that? Together our hands and what's in them, that's how we pursue, that's how we move, that's how we live for Jesus and make the world a better place. And you know, I ask you today, what is in your hands? What is deep in your heart? And I love this question that I heard a few years ago. What lights you up? Ask yourself that question, this is what lights me up. And pursue it and imagine and believe for it. What do you need courage to believe and speak out? What would you write on your hands today? And believe that those gifts can grow over time and with seasons and with confidence and because God said so. I'm gonna ask my friend Fox to read us an amazing Bible verse. Ephesians 2 verse 10. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. I love that. You can't go past the Word of God. And you know, when I think about how God wants to use every single one of us, I love that the last line of that Bible says, says, walk in them. The purpose that God imagines for us is gonna require action and a step, and that is gonna require courage. So take courage, Hillsong Church. Take courage, Hillsong Kids, Hillsong Youth. And um, you know, isn't it so backwards that so many of us live by our couldn'ts and wouldn'ts? I couldn't possibly imagine that. I wouldn't possibly imagine that. He is a no limits God, so we do not limit Him. If you had told little Becky who lived in such chaos and drama and darkness as a child, she wouldn't have believed where she was today. And now I am older. And it has taken listening to the right voices, digging deep, being confident in what God has shown me and spoken to me, having courage, being willing to try and have a go, to trial and error. That's okay too. Staying in my lane, cheering others on, paying it forward. And I believe that paying it forward is such a key to the things that God is placing on our lives. He gives us these gifts, yes, to satisfy us and make us come alive when we're doing them, but really, the gifts that He gives us are to pay it forward for others and to make Jesus shine brighter, pay it forward to others. Romans 1.12, now this means when we come together in a side by side, hand by hand, something wonderful will be released. We can expect to be co-encouraged and co-comforted by each other's faith. If I think about pay it forward experts, I think of people like Matt and Joe Garrett, who when my husband and I first came to the Hills campus, they showed us their gifts of welcome, building God's house, loving people, keeping things simple. I think of a person like Julia who showed me leadership, wisdom, how to be a woman in ministry, how to put Jesus first. And then I can't finish my message, which I'm about to without acknowledging my husband, who's the biggest pay it forward expert ever and who is the biggest imagineer there is, who has always encouraged me as a woman in ministry, as a a person to believe and to imagine what God can do through me. So pay forward the gold in you, the wisdom in you, the gifts in you. We need you. 
And you know, my prayer is that every single one of you would find your why, what lights you up. That you would imagine what God can do through you. That you would come alive from the inside out. And that together, we would build the church with our friends and our family.